Francis Ngannou takes on Cyril Gan, took on Cyril Gan rather, UFC 270 for all the marbles for the heavyweight crown. And this, you know, the buildup was crazy. Um, you know, the narratives of the former training partners, who knocked out who, who was getting the better of who, you know, all of this was going to be settled. And when I think of all the different ways that this fight could have been won, don't get me wrong, everyone watches Francis Ngannou. Everyone goes into a Francis fight to see that insane knockout power. And, you know, I'm definitely one of them as well. I was telling anyone with a pulse who would listen that, you know, don't blink. Five minutes is all this fight needs. And after the first minute and a half when Cyril Gunn was, you know, able to to clinch Francis Ngannou, able to take him closer, able to withstand the initial barrage. And there was an initial barrage. Um, you could tell. You could tell this was going to be a longer fight. And of all the ways, all the satisfying ways to win, I think for this one, you know, there's almost no doubt that this current iteration of Francis Ngannou is evolving. This current iteration of Francis Ngannou is growing and has grown. And let's unpack this fight because he showed a repertoire, an offensive grappling repertoire that really was the difference here. Because on the feet, on the feet, he was not necessarily able to show the level of diversity. And Cyril Garden was quite frankly winning. I think the judges had it two up, two nil in the first two rounds. In the last three rounds, Francis Ngannou took it. And he didn't take it because of his amazing striking. No, he took it because of his offensive grappling, namely the wrestling, namely the takedowns, the ability to control Cyril Garn for long periods of time. So let's get into it. You know, the, the first round, everyone's zoned in. Everyone is keyed in. Francis comes in, bull in the china shop. Cyril's able to withstand it, take Francis, pit him against the cage, and we're into a little bit of a clinch match. And I think this is amazing by Cyril. I mean, he, he, he copped some. He definitely copped some. But once he was able to get past that, and it's always been an MO, you know, versus Francis, you need, I mean, because he knocks people out almost all the time. If you can get him, if you can withstand the initial charge from the bull, hopefully... You know, your chances of winning get significantly better. And the sample size of that hypothesis, you know, there's not a lot of it, but Cyril Gan was able to prove that. And Cyril Gan presents a lot of different problems, right? He's stand switching, um, he's unorthodox nature of movement. And even though Francis is clearly trained with this guy, it's definitely something that he hasn't seen at that level. And basically, from the mid first round to the conclusion of the second round, Cyril was able to fight at a pace, fight more importantly at a distance that Francis was uncomfortable was with. And while he wasn't necessarily able to land incredible damage, he was landing. He was landing frequently and he was tiring Francis out. By the second, sorry, by the first and definitely by the end of the second, you could see that Francis, his mouth was open and, you know, he was definitely struggling with the pace of the fight and definitely with the way that the fight was going. And if nothing was going to change, we were going to see a change in champion there's every you know there's a pivotal moment in the fight and that happens in round three when you know Cyril goes for a kick and you know it's Francis I think partially catches it anyway he slams him down off the back of that was able to change the distance and take Cyril Gan down he was able to take Cyril Gan down now this is important because he didn't necessarily hold Cyril Gan down for a long period of time he was able to do so, maintain a little bit of control. Cyril was able to take Francis up, press him against the cage. But later on, in that particular round, Cyril, I mean, Francis Ngannou closes the distance. I'm talking about the Francis Ngannou, the, you know, pressure puncher Francis Ngannou, the, you know, predator Francis Ngannou, closes the distance, you know, locks in with a gable grip, uh, a double leg takedown and proactively start, you know, taking Cyril Gan down. And I think the third, the third round, and namely that first takedown, while it didn't necessarily happen, you know, in a uh, textbook takedown sort of way, you know, there was a bit of luck involved, but there was no luck involved in the slam. Okay, I'm sorry, that, that, that's what I'm trying to get at. It gave Francis Ngannou the confidence 
to start using wrestling in a proactive, offensive nature. And honestly, when you have a beast like Francis Ngannou on top of you, you know, Cyril, again, in the first time, when he was taken down, was able to come off. But constantly having Francis on top of you, the weight on top of you, started grinding Cyril down. And it basically was another wrinkle and and a wrinkle that, you know, no doubt he hasn't necessarily seen Francis use in an you know offensive sort of manner that he had to take into account. The fourth round was similar. Francis took Cyril down again. And this time he's hunting for it. He's closing the distance and hunting for a takedown. This is Francis Ngannou. And again, all that weight, all 260, 270, whatever he was, because he was definitely bigger than what he was weighing uh, at the weigh-ins, pressure on Cyril Gan. 2-2, going to the fifth round. And Cyril snatches up a single leg with a lot of time to go. He is in Francis's guard. In Francis's guard. And he goes for a leg attack. On top, he decides to abandon top position to go for a leg attack. Now, don't get me wrong. There were certain instances within that transition where it kind of looked like Francis didn't know what he was doing. It kind of looked like there was potentially going to be a submission there. But there wasn't. There wasn't. And... You know, the guys made, uh, the commentary team rather made a big deal about it. And, yeah, you know, rightly so. Uh, he suffered, you know, there was a bit of a brain snap. But, you know, he went for an offensive submission. Potentially something that he felt could have win, won him the match. And, you know, 50-50 potentially. Uh, but it didn't pay off. And Francis was able to get on top for long periods of time. Control the position. Often not much offense from that uh from that position and grind out a very, very satisfying victory. And when you think about, you know, it was later told, uh, he's later told the media that he had really serious leg injuries prior to the fight. It's amazing. I mean, kind of makes sense when you saw those knee pads, right? Now it, it, it all starts coming out. But Francis Ngannou, in a way that you probably didn't think, what a way to get your first five round victory the big boy got skills. Um, very satisfying. It must have been very satisfying with him, for him rather. And, you know, I have no doubt that if Francis Ngannou does stay in the UFC, which we really hope he does, he will fight Cyril. And I have no doubt that we're going to see a better fight from Cyril Gunn. But right now, there is a metamorphosis happening in Francis Ngannou. And the fact that he can go into his next fight you know, in terms of whoever he's going to fight with that offensive grappling in his repertoire, at least to allow him to try it, give him the confidence. Confidence is a hell of a drug. Uh, is amazing, speaks volumes, and is going to be a very scary proposition for what already is a very scary heavyweight champion in Francis Ngannou. Look, that is my reaction of the fight, guys. Tell us what you think. Is Francis going to remain in the UFC? If so, who is next? What's next for Francis Ngannou? Leave some comments in the below. Give us a thumbs up. And we hope, we hope to see you soon.